I was living through sadness, uh, isolation. I put the abuse in, a, in its own little box. I cried a lot. I built strong walls. My son said to me, Mom, you, you don't laugh anymore. And that's when I realized that I, I needed to make some changes. I am Sherry. Nothing means more to me than my son. She is my best friend. We tell jokes. We hold hands. I was a stay-at-home mom. Proud of it. My husband was the sole provider. I thought my marriage would be happy. Um, I thought there would be always be mutual respect. I saw no signs whatsoever that things were going wrong. It was one day happily married, the next day bombshell. And I had to believe what was documented evidence that my, my husband had uh, a second life. This is hard. <laughs> Betrayal is what hurt me, uh, lies, the fact that I could no longer trust. Everything that I had believed in my husband was not true. Uh, he was one way at home and another way in his other life. I went in and packed everything of my son's, a few things of mine. I had dropped my son off from, for school and I had given him the last $2.25 that I had for to, to my name for his lunch, and I didn't know what I was going to do. That is when the crisis center came in. It was very hard to dial those numbers because I had to admit that I was homeless, that I couldn't take care of my son, and I couldn't take care of me. But when I called them, they treated me with so much dignity, and I got the most unbelievable, kindest person. I call her my, my frontline warrior angel on the phone. And she gives me a wealth of information, where I can go to make sure that Alan has food, where I can go for shelter, who I can talk to, you know, just a, a wealth of information. They kept saying, it's going to be all right, Sherry. So I had to put my life in their hands and let them help me. I'm working. We're not homeless anymore. The crisis center is my refuge. They, they're angels. My sister said to me, Sherry, don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. I'm glad that I went out on the limb. I'm glad that I called the crisis center. I'm glad that they gave me the fruit that was at the end of that limb. I'm glad I picked it. I'm glad I ate it. I'm glad I lived it. I'm just, I'm just so happy. I think she's the best mom. survivor of childhood sexual abuse. I grew up in a dysfunctional family where my father sexually abused all four of his daughters. I don't remember the first time my dad molested me. I remember just a series of times when he would break into my bedroom and uh, touch me while I was pretending to be asleep. There was nothing I could do. I was powerless, he was powerful. Why didn't I tell anyone? I, I tried out little things that, that were important to me to my mom and she shut me down and, and didn't want to hear it and went straight to my dad. I did think about running away, but I didn't have anywhere to go and you know, I needed, I needed them. I cried at home. I cried at home so much 
I cried from the depths of my soul. And I shut myself down, I built walls, and I could not wait to get out of there until my sentence was done. I first came in contact with Crisis Center uh, by wanting to give back and go there to volunteer. I was invited to the Empower Group. We all have something in common, but you don't know specifics, and um, everybody's on their own level of healing and journey, and I just really like uh, being part of it. I am healing because it's lifelong. The crisis center is there. It's such a shining light, such a safe place, such a place that people can go that are in so much pain can find healing there. If I could give back to the crisis center, to the people that literally saved my life, I have to do that. You can survive, you can thrive long past whatever happened to you and learn to, to put it in the past. You don't bury it, but you put it where it belongs and you go on and be happy. The best revenge is a happy life.